All right, so we're taking a look at the Blackmagic 4K ATM live switch, which we're setting up for an event. So we want to make sure we're doing a dry run, uh, that everything works, and um, you know all the pieces are here. Uh, we are doing multicam switching as well as broadcasting to the internet, so live streaming. Uh, this is uh, the way I set it up. It's probably not the best way, but it's uh, what works for me. And if you guys have suggestions on how to make it better, I'm all ears. But uh, I've been using this setup for a little while now, and um, I'm going to walk you through what we have here. So the Blackmagic ATM is uh, pretty much this unit right here, and uh, it's just this one U. Now, this these switches here will only let you preview your cameras but um, it actually doesn't switch the program feed so in order to control the switch you have to connect to it via Ethernet um, or set it up on a LAN or network and then you can use software uh, on a computer system if you don't have the hardware switch which is like four thousand dollars anyways so right now we have uh, two cameras set up we have the OC LCM 156 monitor here as our multi view so uh, this is getting a feed from the switch where all your cameras could be set up. Now you have up to eight cameras here or you could set a couple of the cameras as graphics or something. One to four is actually HDMI inputs and five to eight is SDI inputs. Now you'll see here we have a Shogun. Now the Shogun is actually uh, recording the program. So uh, for instance if I was to cut cameras you'll see as we switch, the Shogun is going to record the program. So we're doing this because before it gets out to the internet, we're getting uh, the highest possible quality, which is uh, 1080. Um, we're not streaming in 4K. Actually, your upstream is most likely 720. So we're doing a 1080 local here before it gets compressed in YouTube. Now, uh, again, this is a software. This is connected via wireless. We have a little router connected on the back here. And... I don't know if you can see it, this little portable router. These are so cool because they're just battery powered and, and they create their own little wireless network. Um, so that's uh, the software is connected there. You don't need the software to switch cameras, but you do need it to change settings like frame rates, resolution. Um, here we have our audio tab. So we can select the audio that we want to use. Um, I specifically do not use camera audio. Um, because if you were to cut from one camera to the other and they're a distance apart, they could sound different and there could also be a delay. So the way I have it set up here is I have um, just my RCA. Uh, actually, I don't need XLR. So what I'm doing is I'm using RCA uh, as the input. So I have some RCA cables. These are the RCA cables here that run to the back of the switch. Now, the ATM does have two XLR inputs, but if you were to do that, they only go to one channel, so you would have like a left or a right audio sound. Uh, by adding a mixer here, we're able to pipe in multiple microphones, whether quarter beat, quarter inch, or XLR. Um, actually, this one even offers phantom power. Uh, but we're, we're able to input several different microphones, and they both output to left and right via RCA. And as we cut cameras, our audio is constant, so our audio never changes as we cut cameras. So uh, it doesn't sound off, or there's no delay. Now, we can control each one of the microphones here. We have uh, gain settings and EQ settings on each one of the microphones. Now, I'm not real happy about this uh, mixer. I actually ordered a 1U, so a 1U is pretty much like this design here. And so I'm going to replace this whole mixing board with a 1U uh, as soon as it comes in and that'll make this setup a lot more compact uh, and it'll look a lot more streamlined but this this is a setup that we've been using and it works really well um, and that's the reason why we use a mixer because we want our audio to go left and right and we want multiple inputs now this uh, microphone here is actually coming off of this wireless receiver right into this XLR and um, we're getting the audio from this microphone to this wireless so you can imagine if we had a wireless setup to uh, someone speaking or if we had a microphone up on stage we could do wireless and we could input it into the uh, mixer here or we could run full XLR out um, but basically this is just showing you that we are getting audio elsewhere 
and not from the camera feeds itself. So that's the uh, audio tab there. Now in your media here you can load different graphics. Um, your settings here is your camera angles and also your frame rates and stuff. But uh, this is pretty much the one you're going to be at. If you want to do a quick cut, you'll notice we're using Wirecast here. A quick cut on the keyboard is just this uh, space bar and then it jumps. And then if you want to use the controller here, the little lever fader, hit the enter button on your keyboard and then it will fade or transition to the next camera angle. Um, so the top one is your program feed, what camera is live. The bottom one is kind of like what camera you want to cut to. So here we could say, you know, let's go to media one and you notice it doesn't change there. But as soon as we hit enter, it will load media one. Now we go back to camera six. Again, this is just loading it, and we hit enter, and then we fade into camera six, and back and forth. But uh, we'll go camera five here, camera six here. All right, anyway, so Wirecast is what we use to set up a stream out to YouTube. Um, there's anywhere from a 20-second delay to maybe 40 seconds, typically around 20 seconds. There's also live chat in YouTube, which is great. Now, Wirecast sees only one camera um, and then you have to pay if you want to do multiple cameras or sometimes you need special hardware to do uh, multiple cameras and well that's what we have here is the uh, live switch uh, but anyways this is a free version of Wirecast it has a little logo on the bottom you can remove that for 10 bucks um, but Wirecast only sees one camera anyway uh, one camera feed but here we could switch to eight different cameras if we wanted to so we use Wirecast right up to YouTube, uh, works really well. So um, that feed, by the way, on the computer is coming out of the intensity. So what happens is there's a program feed that comes out of here, and it goes into the intensity, and this is connected via Thunderbolt over to this laptop, and it gives that video feed over there. Now this intensity here is bus powered, so there's no additional power, it's just powered via Thunderbolt, and uh, it doesn't you know put any stress on your computer you could run it on a MacBook Air if you wanted to and then what we're doing is we're taking the program feed output so there's an HDMI output on this unit and this is the difference between this unit and the cheaper uh, I think they're called extremes or something like that out there or intensities uh, there's different versions this one is a more expensive version because it has an output and so we're getting the program feed in we're sending the program feed out and we're recording the program feed uh, so that's the difference is, is we have the output here. Now you very well could use an input program feed here and output via the Atomos because it has an output and then go back into like a cheaper unit like this. But the problem is if you, for some reason you have to power down your Shogun, um, you're going to lose your entire feed. So it's better that we do all the feeds straight to the internet and we just record uh, the feed from the Shogun whenever possible. Um, yeah, and then... I put a uh, little power strip 1U into this uh, case here. Now you don't see it, but there's multiple outlets on the back side of this, so we have a lot of things plugged in on the back, um, such as this monitor over here and, and other and this mixing board, uh, which is great. So here I just have my laptop plugged in, but if I could, I took this out. Um, you know, we we can have all access to this if we need to plug something in, but most of the stuff is plugged on the back side. And I think that's kind of a quick run through. Oh, let me show you the camera setups here. Now, what we're doing is uh, we're using the GH4s. And the reason why we're using the GH4s is because um, we wanted to do multi-camera um, live switching. And so you need at least three of the same cameras if you want it to look as close as possible. Now, this camera is great. The GH4 is great because it can run on one single battery forever you can run a whole event on one battery so they last forever not only is a battery great on these things but it can record 4k internally while outputting 1080 simultaneously so we're actually recording 4k video footage in each camera and then outputting the 1080 stream to the live switch so we have a backup of a backup um, and what we're doing here is we're using an Atomos H2S this is actually converting the HDMI signal into SDI. Uh, the reason why we do this is because um, we can go hardwired and we don't have to worry about wireless systems and batteries 
uh, if your camera is going to be mostly stationary and you can do s long runs as you can see here we have cables that are anywhere from 50 feet to 150 feet and we can run these cameras really really far via SDI and the Blackmagic ATM is not as sensitive to SDI as it is with HDMI for some reason I had some issues with HDMI if I'm trying to do long runs so we decided just to go SDI and so you'll see here we have another Atomos H2S and this is uh, running SDI out also so anyways yeah these cameras are very cheap the battery runs forever it records 4k internally while outputting 1080 um, and then this camera runs all kinds of frame rates the GH3 could not output the same frame rate on uh, via HDMI as the GH4 could so if you're doing 2398, 24, 2997, whatever frame rate you choose it can output it via HDMI so this is ideally the best camera we could find. You could use a Sony, you could use a pocket cinema camera but you'll run into battery issues, you can't record internally while exporting uh, via HDMI so the GH4 is really an ideal camera for what we're doing here with live switching. All right, and um, as I mentioned before, this whole ATM is on a wireless network uh, using our wireless router. Now you can control the uh, switch remotely. This is a Strata app on the iPhone, which is like ten bucks. And you notice if I toggle, I could switch between camera angles. And so this is like ten bucks, and they also have a version for the iPad as well. Um, and this is Meta Control, which is on Android. And so you'll notice that uh, this one has a little bit more control and it's free. So you can go five, six, oops, cut, cut, and cut. And they also have the auto switch for the fader, which the Strata doesn't have. Uh, and this is meta control on the Android. So you can, you don't have to be by your computer. You could just kind of do this remotely um, and select all your different camera angles and fade in and out. You can manually fade as well. Um, anyways, I, hopefully I didn't miss anything, but if you guys have any questions about live switching, let me know. Um, you know, we've been doing this a little while. It works really well. Uh, like I said, I'm going to remove this tray and this mixer and replace it with a clean 1U uh, as soon as that comes in tomorrow. But uh, other than that, it's, um, it's a pretty fun, pretty fun little setup. So, yeah, any questions, hit me up at the blog, cheesycam.com.